welcome everybody. Um, I can see a few more people standing outside, not sure if they want to come in or not, but I think we'll just, um, we'll just get started for now. Perfect. Cool. Sounds good. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome to the session um, about um, optimizing instant games design. Um, we'll talk a bit about um, how we are thinking about designing instant games, designing features and products, but also share a bit about how this can be applied to games in general and how you can kind of make the most out of the instant games platform. I spoke about instant games here, um, here as well last year, so very excited to be here again this year. I was told to click in that general direction. There we go. Perfect. Um, so before we kick off, um, my name is Joy. Um, I'm part of the Games Partnerships team based here out of our London office. I've been with Facebook for almost four years now, which is quite a while. Um, I'm also very excited that this year we have a larger, um, a larger team um, with us. Uh, apart from me, there are three um, new um, Games Partnerships managers, um, and very excited for you all to meet them over the next few days. So what we'll cover today around instant games design is first of all looking at our superpowers. So really looking at what makes instant games unique, why do people come to play instant games. We'll then look at how we translated that into design principles, how that works in terms of like how we are, how we are ideating around designing for the platform and the look and feel. And then lastly, okay this clicker and me are not getting along. There was, well, number three was basically um, looking at how you can apply that to designing your games. Now, before we jump into instant games specifically, I wanted to talk a bit about Facebook gaming as a whole, the mission we have set ourselves, and why we have been investing so much into the gaming space over the last few years and also moving forward. Um, the mission we have set ourselves as an overall gaming team at Facebook is to build the world's gaming community. And really the idea here is for Facebook to become a hub and a home for gaming content, no matter what type of player you are, no matter whether you come to Facebook to play games or to just connect with others or to talk about games. And so as we are looking at this, we are partnering with developers, and a lot of you are partners um, that we work with in the room already, and we are also working with content creators. Over the last few years, we have ventured into the gaming video space and started to look more at how we can bring, um, how we can bring video streamers to the platform, how they can build their communities there and, um, and bring their content. And then lastly, we're obviously not forgetting the game enthusiasts in the ecosystem and really kind of as with the mission of building the world's gaming community, we're really thriving towards helping connect these three stakeholders of the industry in a scalable and in a relevant way, making sure that no matter who they play with or what they play or where they play from, they have a rich and exciting experience on Facebook. Can we go back? <laughs> we're going to get there, guys. We have a couple of slides to go. And at some point it'll work now. Perfect. So, we already see that this is happening on Facebook quite a bit. We see that 700 million people already engage with gaming content on the platform. And that is whether they play instant games, which is a very large part of this, or whether they follow streamers, or whether they join gaming groups to talk to others about games. And 700 million is a massive number. Every time I talk about it, I get excited again. And so we're really looking at growing that in the future and moving forward with a large part of that being what we are building for instant games. So as a hub and a home for instant games, and I said that that kind of very much connects to, to the way we are looking at gaming on Facebook in general, we have earlier this year introduced the Facebook Gaming tab, which is a very large step um, into that direction of building the world's gaming community. The Gaming tab is a personalized feed for gaming content, depending on what type of player or gamer you are. It lives in the Facebook main navigation, and we have been rolling this out over the last year, and we will continue rolling this out moving forward. A large part of the content that you have in the Facebook Gaming tab is instant games, and so that's what we will mainly look at from now on. So looking at instant games specifically, I think as many of you know, when we initially started instant games, we very much focused on Messenger and on what the experience for instant games looks like inside of the Messenger app. Over the last year, we have started looking more and more at what the, what the instant games experience looks and feels like inside of Facebook. 
And as we have made that transition and kind of shifted our focus onto building instant games inside of Facebook, we've also realized that there's a ton of opportunity in terms of the services and the virality that the Facebook app generates. So here are some of the different services that we are thinking about when we're looking at instant games. Obviously, the gaming tab being a massive part of it, um, newsfeed and the virality that generates, notifications as a high urgency channel, and many, many more that we are all leveraging to really make instant games the best platform possible. And so with all of these new um, surfaces and with all of these kind of new, um, new things to discover inside of the Facebook app, we are also looking at, um, at what, what we can build inside of Facebook that we potentially couldn't build inside of the nature of Messenger. And so we are looking at expanding the social mechanics beyond a turn-based one-to-one gameplay. For that, we are very much looking at real-time games and thinking about how we can bring people together at the same time as they play inside of Facebook. And lastly, we're obviously looking a lot at leveraging feed-based virality and really the social nature in the way that um, content spreads on Facebook. So I said we will talk a bit about superpowers, and when we're talking about superpowers, we're really talking about why do players come to Facebook and um, why do they want to play instant games? What do they love about it? And in order to find that out, we didn't do any magic. We did some good old user research and asked some players in terms of what, what they love about the platform and what we really need to amplify. And so here are some of the most common answers around why users wanted to play instant games. We asked them why, when, and who they play with, and what the main benefit is they see from playing on the platform. So looking at the why, I think that's not, um, that's not too surprising. It's obviously a form of entertainment, it's a form of relaxation, it's a form of filling time and of connecting with others. The when became a bit more interesting and was mainly around snackable gaming, around um, traveling, around commuting, around raiding, around watching, and really kind of diving in and out of these games in an easy way. The who was mainly around family and friends, which is exactly what we have built Instant Games for, and so that is very much aligned with how we've already been building the platform. And then lastly, the value proposition and what people really see as a benefit compared to other platforms was that there is no download required and that it's short and quick to dive in and out of the games. And so as we looked at these different superpowers, we then started to kind of bucket them into kind of the overarching themes of what we hear from users. So the first one is obviously instant playability, making sure that you can instantly play games, that it's very easy, that there is no download required. The second one is that they're socially connected, and so one of the things we're really looking at is amplifying how we can really bring people together in a more meaningful way. And then lastly, it's all about real-time presence, about having that guarantee and knowing that your friends are on the platform, and that you can invite them, and they will be there, and they can play with you very easily and in a frictionless way. And so we took these overarching themes and we kind of divided them into different, um, into different UX principles. And these are the UX principles that we kind of designed the entire Instant Games experience features and products by. The first one is fun. Everything about the platform should convey fun to the user. It should be rewarding, it should be fat satisfying, it should be delightful, and really kind of the fun should be there in every single action that they take. As part of the kind of fun UX principle, we have designed daily challenges. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this already. It lives in the, in the Facebook gaming tab. It's a very prominent unit. And it's really made to um, make discovering games in a, fun, in a fun way. So what happens here is every day the user gets a new daily challenge. We pick a different game. Um, they, get, um, they need to score specific points. And afterwards, they get a reward. So again, the kind of rewarding, delightful, satisfying feeling is there for this, uh, for this feature. Next, obviously, things should be social. And in terms of social, we don't only mean connecting with players, but we also mean making something worth sharing, making it meaningful enough for the user to really feel like this is something they want to share with their, with their broader friends. And so one thing we are looking at, and I hinted at this before, um, with kind of um, the way that newsfeed virality works, um, we're currently testing not only sharing videos or sharing assets, but having a more interactive way of sharing. And this interactive way of sharing comes in the form of a poll, which is something we're beta testing at the moment, where a user does not only, where a user actually shares something with their friends that is something that they can actually do something with, and not just something that you show them. And then lastly, games should be snackable. And by snackable, we don't mean that there can't be or that there shouldn't be long engagement or deep engagement. But what we mean more is that it should be easy to find the game, and it should be easy to find the game again once you've played it already. 
And so for this, and this has been feedback we have heard from a lot of our, from a lot of our developer partners. Sorry, one second, we'll get there again. Here, we've heard from a lot of our developer partners. You can see the recently played unit, and the recently played unit really was something that kind of, that kind of goes into the snackable idea into finding games again. So every game that a user has played on the platform, no matter where they played it from, gets recorded into this recently played unit and is easy to dip back into. And then lastly, things should be, things should be low friction. <laughs> Bear with me. The clicker and I will at some point manage. Okay, there we go. Things should be low friction, and for low friction, we're currently, this is more like kind of the devil being in the details, and we really want to provide a consistent experience. One thing that we're working on here, and you see this is another beta product we're testing, is direct invites, which goes more into kind of the low friction, bringing people together in real-time direction, where a user can directly invite a friend from a game, we send them a notification on Facebook, and if they click on that notification, they find themselves in the same game together, and they can play in the same context in real time. So those are generally the principles that we're looking at as we kind of ideate new features and as we look at as as we look at building them. And so as we think about where they apply, we're thinking about kind of three main buckets. The first one is obviously dis the discovery bucket. And so we're thinking about how does the user usually behave as they discover new instant games that usually happens in kind of a content browsing mode. On one hand, either because they're browsing the gaming tab and all the gaming content there, or because they're browsing newsfeed and they're stumbling across a game that either a friend shared or maybe it's an ad and so on and so forth. The next one is actually playing the game, and this is hopefully where the users spend most time, where they have the most fun, and as a platform, we're really looking more at supporting this with um, game level contexts, making sure that the user understands where they are. And then lastly, we obviously want to re-engage users, and for that, with a focus on Facebook specifically, we're looking at notifications and at providing timely updates. Okay. Um, and so as we're looking at the gamer journey, we're also looking at the touch points and kind of what are the main surfaces that the user interacts with. Obviously, one of the main surfaces for both discovery and for re-engagement is the gaming tab. Um, then they're obviously playing the game. And lastly, we're looking at the in-game menu, which the user encounters as they exit a title. And so we'll look a bit more at that as well. So looking at the gaming tab specifically, we're really looking at making the gaming tab kind of a one-stop shop for either discovering games or re-engaging with games. And so one of the things that we have designed according to kind of things being snackable, things being easy to deal with, uh, we built a dedicated surface for browsing all published games. You can see here at the top of the games tab, there is a play games pill, which really offers the entire catalog. It makes it easy for users to browse according to what is interesting to them, apart from the various recommendation channels that we have built into the games tab already. Um, next up, according to kind of the low friction principle, we have realized that there's obviously a lot of notifications, a lot of updates, whether that is invites from friends, whether that is updates from the games, or whether that is reminders of a game you're already playing. And so we have launched a notifications inbox inside of the, gaming of the gaming tab, which is specific to only game updates and anything related to gaming. And so really in terms of making it consistent, making it intentional, making it easy to find, this is kind of the one-stop shop for everything that is around the games that you have already engaged with. And then obviously social is core, and social is something we think a lot, especially as we, as we design the gaming tab. And so the continue to playing unit, which you see here, again, relatively prominent on the gaming tab, really is kind of a persistent entry point for the user to, um, to continue playing games that they are already playing with their friends. So apart from just the game sending reminders, we're actively making it easy for the user to keep playing socially. And so as we're looking at kind of UX learnings and everything that we have gotten from all these different experiments that we have run over, over, the last, um, over the last few months, one of the main things that we have realized is that media quality is really, really key. If you look at the two different videos that I have here, let's, let's hope this works. Yes, perfect. So you see in the first video, we have a suggested for you unit on the gaming tab, and the suggested for you unit on one hand provides a bit of social context. It usually shows how many people are already playing, and it uses static images in order to get the user to understand what the game is about. 
We are testing out this, this same unit with video content and with making it much more social, making it easier to actually like the page, making it easier to interact with the game, but also showing more context. And as we have started trying this, we have obviously realized that users, um, users, speak to it much, users speak to it much better, they react to it, they react to it better, but we have also realized that the media makes a huge difference. Instant Games has a lot of entry points and there are various ways that a user can discover a game. And so really think about investing into, um, into media for all these different entry points. I know we're, we're not making it very, very easy to understand where what video is shown, but really kind of making that effort to make sure all of, your, um, all of your assets that you upload are the highest quality and really convey what your game is about makes a huge difference as we keep building out discovery surfaces for the platform. And then obviously the user interacts with instant games mainly around gameplay and as I mentioned before, as a platform we're taking a relatively prominent but minimal space just in order to make sure that the user understands the social context there in there and then and there. Um, as the user plays, they have a little toast up there which says Kristen invited you to play. You are currently kind of playing your first turn against Kristen um, and so the user is kept up to date with which social context they are inside of. Lastly, and as the user kind of exits the game, as they finish their play session, we have introduced the in-game menu, and the in-game menu really is a place for the user to do two things. One is to engage deeper with the game they are already playing, and so you see kind of the first, um, the first half almost of the, of the in-game menu is around um, engaging deeper with that game, um, creating home screen shortcuts, sharing it, inviting friends to it, and so on and so forth. The second half of the screen is used to really kind of according to the fun principle, making sure that users um, have an easy way of discovering new games. And so we are showing new games according to what the user would potentially like so that they can easier discover them. So as we look at UX learnings and how we apply these principles, one of the features that we have launched over the last few months is our leaderboards feature. And what it looks like is basically this. Um, as I play an instant game, as I create a high score, I can very easily share this by creating a tournament to my timeline. And as I create this tournament, this is what it looks like. My friends can kind of jump in, their scores get recorded, and we have an interactive unit that lives on my profile and in their news feeds. It can get pretty fun pretty quickly as you have a lot of people engaged, there's reactions, there's comments and so on and so forth. It's been very exciting. We've seen that a couple of tournaments have gone completely viral with thousands of people playing. Um, and so we knew we were onto something but we also realized that we have a little bit of a problem which is there's a lot of tournaments where no one else is playing. And so you're kind of stuck in like Jai Pei's position where you've created a score, none of your friends are joining, it's a little bit awkward and the tournament expires and it wasn't very fun. And so with this cold start problem, we realized that we on one hand need to get a second player to actually start engaging with the person that initially posted the score. And we need to look at making this an, making this an experience that is worth sharing, that is meaningful and worth for the user to actually post to their timeline. And so what we have done is um, redesigned the way that um, tournaments work. We have redesigned the look and the feel of it. And we have done that according to our design principles. We have started using playful iconography and um, more colors, uh, really kind of making it very fun um, as, we, as we wanted to do. We have started putting an enhanced call to action, really making it streamlined, making it frictionless, making it clear for the user what their engagement with this should be. And then lastly, we have added an information hierarchy, again, making it snackable, making it easy to understand what is happening, making it easy to dive, dive in and dive out of the game. And so this is what it looks like. I think it looks much more fun, um, and we will keep doing this with, um, with more and more of our features as they come out. One of the things that we have realized around tournaments, which currently, which currently are used mainly by hyper-casual games, um, is that the experience can be very different and the engagement can be very different depending on how the developer handles what the user journey inside of that looks like. If you look at the first video, you will see that um, I'm currently entering a um, tournament from a tournament post. And as I enter, I immediately land on the game. There is no menu inside of the game. I just land there and I immediately start playing. 
If you compare this to the second video, on the second video I am entering Dunk Shot, um, which is a game by Ketchup, from my recently played unit. I'm entering in a solo mode, and instead of having, um, instead of landing straight inside of the game, I actually land on a menu, I can invite friends, and I can take more actions there. So really thinking about where does the user come from and what experience are they expecting depending on where they come from is really key as you design for your instant games. So as we are looking at kind of building out more and more experiences inside of Facebook, and you see a few of the ones that we are building up here, really kind of keep in mind um, these, these principles just as much as we do, and hopefully they will help guide you in terms of prioritizing, in terms of prioritizing your game design, and in terms of understanding which features you should be using. And if you want to know more about all of this, please visit us um, at fb.gg slash developers. Um, you'll find a ton of best practices, info, interviews, and so on over there. And that's it for me. Thank you very much.